Welcome to another episode of Whitetail Rendezvous, coming to you six days a week as we interview whitetail experts and hear their traditions and personal stories of the hunt. Learn more about the latest gear, discover proven tips, and the latest strategies so you can make your next hunt a success. Now, here's your host, Bruce Hutchin. Welcome to another episode of Whitetail Rendezvous. This is your host, Bruce Hutchin. And this is going to be a Gear Wednesday episode, and I've got Jack Hadley on. And Jack is MassiveMinerals.com. Jack, welcome to the show. Thank you. Glad to be here. Yeah, I heard about Jack from my good friend, Joseph Beyer, Beiler, who wrote Zombie Deer and Broken Horn Buck, or Broken... Brow Time Buck. Yeah, the Brow Time Buck. Man, it's late in the day, folks. Sorry about that. (laughs) Anyway, Joseph Byler wrote Zombie Deer in the Brow Time Buck, and you can get it on Amazon. And shout out for Joseph. Anyway, so he was telling me about Jack and the minerals that he used to shoot some really good deer in Michigan. And Jack is from Michigan. So I wanted to get him on the show to talk about his hunting tradition and talk about massive minerals. So, Jack, what got you into the mineral business? Back in the year 2004, I was living in Marshall, Michigan, and I had an offer to hunt a 228-acre farm, and it was a pickle farm. And so I didn't really know that much about minerals or like deer feed, you know, I mean, I never really did any of that stuff. And I did a job, I do spray foam insulation. So I did a job for this guy, he was a dealer for this great big um, company selling mineral and deer feed. So I, I know... I remember it like it was yesterday. I spent 500 bucks and I took it out to the farm and I was like, first time I used trail cameras, you know, and dumped it down. Like it said, hung a trail stand camera, hung my stand. I said, game on, come back in a couple of days and I'm ready to go. I came back and it got daylight and I looked over where I dumped these minerals. It was like a golf course, which was look like mold. It was like green and clumpy. And I was like, wow, that's not right. So mm-hmm. I kind of walked down there and it was kicked around. It reminded me of like anybody who spilled dog food outside that got really bloated. And so I was like, gosh, I don't know if that's supposed to be right. Cause I wouldn't eat this if I was a deer personally. So I called the guy up and I said, Hey, I'm not looking for my money back. What did I do wrong? And he goes, oh, it is what it is. And I go, well, that's not a really good answer for me. I mean, so I called the manufacturer and they put me through like seven different, not it guys, like quality control guys. Well, the last guy I was talking to, he's like, well, it's the dirt. It's contaminated soil. And I said, well, I, I guess I don't get it because on the back of the bag, it says dump it on dirt, mix it in. He goes, hey, goes, listen. He goes, I'm not, I don't know what to tell you. He goes, he didn't really want anything to do with me. He's like very agitated that I was calling. And I said, well, I'm not looking for anything free. I'm looking for free advice. I like what I did wrong. So what did I do wrong? He's like, he was very rude. I was getting like to the point where I was like, this is not going anywhere. And so I remember saying to the guy, I never forget it. And I said, I think I'm just going to make uh, my own deer mineral. And it was like, you're in a comedy club. This guy started like laughing. I mean, like, <laughs> you know, I'm just like right now he's like, he goes, good luck to you. If I had a dollar for every time somebody said that I'd be a millionaire. And I said, okay, well, we'll end this conversation. So I hung the phone up. So I went back to my deer stand that night. And the more I sat there, the madder I got, the more frustrated. So I hung my bow up and I got my phone out. I started Googling stuff. And I thought, you know what? It can't be that hard. It just can't be. And so I had a buddy that worked at Michigan State. and He was going to be a veterinarian. And I said, hey, I got this idea. And he's like, oh boy, you know, here we go again. And I said, no, no, no. I said, I'm going to bring this mineral up to you. I want you to sample it. I sent him one, you know, it was like my first batch ever. And he goes, um, hey, you want to tone it down a little bit? He goes, that'll kill him. <laughs> I said, oh, a little too much? And he's like, yeah, a little too much zip. And I said, hey, okay. So he's like, what are you trying to do? And I said, I'm just trying to promote a healthy deer herd, but has to have an attractant, but grows bigger racks. And he's like, you got everything but this. And I said, okay, million dollar questions. What is it? And he's, he told me. 
So yeah, don't I, give away any uh, right. proprietary information. Uh, no. So I sent it back to him. And he's like, it's good. You need to take it down to Litchfield Analytical Service, and they need to run it down there to make sure it's 100% legit. I said, okay. So I took a sample down there, and he runs it, and he's like, this is really good. And he goes, but you might want to tweak this. The guy was helping me. He was really nice about it. He's like, I like seeing people like you come in the door that have a passion and, and want to do good. And I said, okay, cool. So I, that took like a long time. And then, so then I put it in little sandwich bags and I mailed it all over like to my buddies in Georgia, Missouri, Ohio, Montana. And I said, just dump this down. Tell me what it does. And I didn't tell them what it was. And most people thought it was just salt in the bag. So. I sent it out and they're like, holy cow, what is in it? This a new boy, what, you want cocaine or something? And I said, why is that? And they go, these deer are going crazy. They're digging stuff up. They're ramming each other. They're fighting. I said, oh man, I'm on to something, you know? So I came back to Michigan and took it back up to Michigan State and they analyzed it and they said, okay. So then I applied for my license and then a patent pending and then my sales tax and all the good stuff. Mm-hmm. So I didn't really know how to market this stuff. I was a builder at the time, you know, a spray foam guy. So my crowd, my people were like more 95% hunters. And I said, okay, I'll put it in the back of my pickup. So I put it back in the pickup and go to the job site. And people say, hey, what is it? And I started selling it. And I remember my first year, all I wanted to do was pay for a bear hunt in Canada. Like I wanted to earn 1200 bucks. That was my goal. And all of a sudden it, it was like quadruple that. And I was like, man, I'm, I'm onto something. I'm a big shooter here, you know? <laughs> and I thought, man, this is cool. So people started knowing me as the mineral man. And I put stickers on my truck. And so I would go to the job site and I would have a brand new spray foam trailer lettered up to the hill. Beautiful trailer, that full wrap. And they go, oh, hey, nice deer sticker, my mineral sticker. And I'm like, you didn't notice the trailer? But they'll notice the mineral. So that was like a joke for a while. So then I remember doing like a road trip trying to sell this stuff. I was just grassroots. I'd go into a, a sporting goods store. Most of the time they told me to leave because they had 27 minerals on the market. I remember driving up to Ionia, Michigan, kind of like mid th- mid all the way up by the bridge. I give this bucket, this sample to this guy that owned the store. And he's like, you know, it's just like anything else. Well, his worker was standing there. His name was Dave Holcomb. I'll never forget it. And Dave goes, well, I'm going to dump it out. So he puts a trail camera down. And a week later, they get all these bucks on it. And Dave's showing the owner, Dan was his name, like what these pictures were. And he's like, where are those deer? And he goes, dude, it's right behind our shop. That's that mineral that you didn't want. That guy don't give it to us. That's massive mineral mix. And he goes, call him. That was my first store. It was Gold Star Outdoors. And he called me and said, hey, how much for a pallet? And I, I remember, I was like, 960 bucks. He goes, bring me two. And I was like, two? And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. So I flew up there like the next day. And this is no kidding. 27 days later, they sold out of two full pallets. That's 480 bags gone in Ionia County. And I said, what are you doing? Like, buy one, get one free. He goes, dude, we can't keep it on the shelves. He goes, I don't know what it is. People are coming in from all over. So I said, okay, well, I started driving up 66, this Michigan Route 66. And I think within a month, I had 27 stores. And I was like, I'm big time. I was thinking I'm like the big shooter now. And then it grew to 41 stores. Then it grew to 47 stores. And then I get a letter in the mail from Tractor Supply Company. They said, hey, we kind of been hearing things about you. You sponsored our buck pull in Jackson, Michigan. You buy some of your materials through us. Would you be interested in coming to our open buying days located in Nashville, Michigan? Or excuse me, Nashville, Tennessee. And I said, okay, okay, yeah. So I go down there, the whole hotel's rented. There's thousands of people all over the United States there. And there's 322 people there to sell Deerman. And I was like, why would they want mine? So you get a 30-minute interview with the buyer. And at any given time, you can just hit the gong button and you're gone. We're 40-some minutes into this conversation now. And he's like, come back for round number two. So we came back for round two. It just it was sad because logistics just didn't line up. We just couldn't figure out how to get that amount of volume from point A to point B and be profitable. So unfortunately, I neglected to turn that deal down and cater to the mom-and-pop stores, which had a great output, had a great ending because the mom-and-pop stores sold probably four times the amount that a big retail was. 
And the reason why is, in my opinion, you go into a large retail store and there's 40 bags of deer mineral. It's overwhelming for a guy to come in and say, hey, what's the best deer mineral? How do you know unless you try them? So the mom and pop stores would carry like three brands and they would test them. And they would say, hey, this is my preference. Because in a small town, in a small store, they're not going to sell you something that doesn't work or that's bad because now they're liable. Like they're like, hey, man, I put my reputation on the line for Jack at Massive General Mix. Now I can't sell it. I stepped back and I thought, man, I'm just going to sell the small retail stores. And then it went to 2,000 bags. Now these are 10 pound bags. Then it went to 4,000 bags. A month? 6,000. A year. A year. 6,000 okay. bags. 8,000 bags. I'm like, man, we're cooking. And we make it right here. We make it in-house. Every bag's touched, weighed. So we make it. It's, 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 a, it's a simple operation. So then people started really talking about it. In Michigan Out of Doors, Jimmy Gretzinger and Jordan Brown got a hold of me. And I've never approached those guys at a hunting show. They always see me. And he came up and he said, hey, I'd like to have you on my show. I said, okay. So they came out to the barn. We did an interview and they put me on like a little 10 minute segment. That night when it aired at 920 or something, at 945, my cell phone was just blowing up with orders all over the state. Bags after bags after bags after bags. And I thought, this is great. And then the state of Michigan came in and kind of said, you know what, baiting's illegal in certain counties. So they put a baiting ban on like certain areas and so forth. It wasn't illegal to sell. It was illegal to use. So now, minerals aren't baiting. Okay, so let's talk about this because there's baiting and then there's minerals as I understand it. No, sure. correct me, help me out and help my listeners out because some places you cannot bait, but in the same place you can use minerals. Sure. In the state of Michigan now, they consider baiting is anything man-made put down by a man. So we just did this big banquet at Jackson Jets, the college, and we sponsor them. So the DNR was there. And I went up and asked him, I said, am I baiting by dumping this down? He said, yes, because they come back to it time and time again. Now, if you use a plant a food plot and once it grows and they eat it, it's gone. So they browse to the next. So Michigan come in and put a complete baiting ban on the state started in 2019. So this happened a couple months ago and everybody says, oh, Jack, your sales are going to go down. Wrong. <laughs> it actually went up because like Anything else, if the state government's going to come in and tell me I can't plow my driveway, you're going to plow your driveway 10 times. This is proven that this works. And basically what it is, they're trying to put down, they're trying to get a capture or figure out what's wrong with EHD. But if you go into the DNR and look at how they, the definition of EHD, it's more or less that they need vitamins and minerals. So it, there's, it's a gray area right now. But on the back of our bags, it has a claimer on it, a big, nice claimer that says, please consult with your local laws and games in that area to make sure it's legal. I don't really think the DNR really knows which direction they're going to go to. Yeah, um, and let's give a shout out for the zombie deer and, and brown tine buck because Joseph's buck that he took, that he watched, he and his running mate were healthy deer in an area that was decimated by EHD. And the only thing they could figure out was because of massive mineral mix or specifically your product. Now, would another product with same contents work to give them the things that they needed to combat the disease? And that's a question you and I can't answer. But the anecdotal information just for Joseph, one person, one place, one deer, was that that deer succeeded where hundreds of other deer died. Correct? Yes, it's where Michigan got hit really hard, and it was sad, and I believe that the stronger, the healthier deer made it, and that book proves it right there. I mean, he goes to show that he dumped down all these minerals, and I call them like uh, foo-foo minerals, where I want to see what I'm buying, and if I dump a mineral out and it's jet black, that's all dye. It's artificial, so it's just going to bleed away in the first moisture of the rain. I want to know what's the nuts and bolts of a product and what makes it work. So I left a clear window on the front and a big clear window on the back. So I can show people like this is salt, but it has all these ingredients mixed in with it. This is what you need. So when you're healthy, like those deer were eating a massive mineral 
it boosted their immune systems, but it was a year round process to where that deer should have been floating in the river along with all the other ones, but it made it. It came out to be, if I had to green score that buck, one high 160s, but the body looked like like a bodybuilder. And I hear this all the time, that these bucks and does get huge chest and gain a lot of weight. And I shot a, a matter of fact, speaking of that, I shot a buck in Ohio, in Southern Ohio, in Georgetown on the farm. And I watched this guy like the brow time buck. I watched him from a young buck and I harvest him at three and a half years old. Now, some people might say, hey, that's not quality deer, man. But this buck got in three fights with bucks double his size and run him right out of the area. So I knew he was the aggressor. Now, when I shot this buck, his base of his horns were bigger than a pop can, like a 12 ounce pop can diameter. And when mm-hmm. I brought him back, everybody thought he was a six and a half to seven year old buck. He was a three and a half year old buck. Now, that being said, later that year, I shot a three and a half year old buck in Michigan with no minerals, and it looks like a tiny rat compared to that. Now, that buck in Ohio was only a seven pointer. My buck in Michigan was a 10 pointer, not even close to the rack size, body wise, nothing. So, I mean, right there proves it's like an athlete when you get Gatorade your body's depleted. You got to get these vitamins and minerals back in your body. And what what better way than let the deer, you know, you get a healthy doe, produce the healthy and so forth and so forth down the line. You know, it's not all about buying a 180 inch buck and letting them breed and get, you know, it's genetics. Those deer, just like humans, perform better. You know, I think they get some through our tongue, in my opinion. How do people get a hold of you, uh, Jack? We're on Facebook. Facebook will link it right to my phone. They can leave me a message. A lot of people call me. I have my phone used it pretty much me all the time. I remember one time I had a call on a Sunday. And it was from, I never forget his name. I never met him. I wish, I'm going to go up there and see him. His name is Rodney Parks. And he lives way upstate New York. He read about my product and he called me and he's like, you answered. And I said, yeah, it's Sunday. Can I help you? So we talked for 45, 50 minutes on the phone. And he goes, okay, sign me up for a pallet. And I said, well, you know, that's... <laughs> You don't even know me. He goes, how much for shipping everything out the door? So I give him a price the next day, being Monday. He sends me a check. Since then, this is three years now, he's probably bought 12 pallets off me. And he can't get enough of it. And that opened that door up to people in Delaware, Maine, that I've never sold to before, buddies that he knows. He works on the pipeline. And he would send these pictures back of his family just harvesting deer. We've never seen these deer on our farms. So um, so they can always get a hold of me through Facebook. My number is right on there, the website. What's your Facebook uh, name? Massive Mineral Mix. The website's massivemineral.com, and they can go there to order, and that'll link us to our phones and so forth. There's a lot of videos on there and stuff, so we try to spruce it up a little bit. We always do um, tutorials on how to dump it down and stuff like that, and, and we share a lot of pictures from our customers. A lot of people will send them over, and I always ask, hey, can I share this video? Michigan's got a competitive state, and somebody's their neighbor, and they're like, hey, that's the deer I was hunting. So, <laughs> so we always ask to make sure. You know, we never want to you know, make anybody upset. I'm always available. I'll even come out and walk somebody's land. Hey, here's what I would do. I'm not a whitetail expert, and I don't claim to shoot a 150-inch buck every year, but our success to me, I mean, if you ask me how many deer I shoot a year, probably 50. And that's because I sell them the mineral and they send me back the pictures. That's how I like it. I'm getting, I'm, <laughs> I'm getting to be more of a, a land steward. <laughs> I get more excited about going out planting, checking trail cameras and dumping mineral down versus actually pulling the trigger. So That's great. One thing uh, Jack and I talked in the warm up that if you'd like, you get on his website, you get on Facebook, we're going to offer a Whitetail Rendezvous special that if you use promo code WR2019, Jack's going to send out a free sample to you. You get just have to pay the shipping and handling. Jack. Correct. And so that's basically it, folks. A free sample. How much is that? Is that a pound? It should be five pounds. Okay. So, so a five pound sample, massive mineral mix from Jack. And he'll send it out, and you're going to pay the shipping. Shipping and handling typically is what five bucks, or it just depends on. I think around eleven bucks. Okay, right in there because of the weight. That's the hard part about this. There's no 
good way to ship it. We ship it right through the mail because honestly, it, it's the cheapest way to ship it. You can ship up to 70 pounds for $13. So if, oh my you buy, if you buy five bags, I can ship it for 13 bucks. Oh my so, goodness. Wow. But other than that, like if it's bulk quantity and you're within driving distance, I mean, I mean, I drive to Missouri to meet people, you know, it don't matter to me, but I can deliver it to you. Or if it's truck, like big pallets or something, have to go VIA truck lines. So like okay. uh, USF Holland. So folks, there's a heck of a deal from Whitetail Rendezvous. And again, the promo code is Whitetail Rendezvous 2019 for a free five pound sample of massive mineral mix. Now, what's your hunting tradition, Jack? I was pretty much brought up in a hunting family. My dad had um, 11 people in his family. So I had 26 cousins, mostly primarily boys. And so my dad was a truck driver growing up as a kid. So he was gone all the time. So we had an 80 acre woods across where I grew up in Gregory, Michigan. And the guy said, you can do anything you want over here, buddy. You want to hunt, trap? And I said, I'm going to start trapping. I was 12 years old. So I had a moped, a little Honda Spree. I loaded all my traps up and I would go around the neighborhood and trapping. And then I put an article up. I thought it was kind of cool. I remember in Tom's Market, I said, want to get rid of those muskrats? Call Jack for the ponds. Back then they were $4 a piece. Now mind me, I'm 46 years old and raccoons were 20 bucks. So I started making some serious money trapping, but I didn't look at it as the dollar amount. I looked at it as like, I had the best bicycle in the block. I went somewhere as I had money in my pocket. So I started teaching myself how to hunt because my dad was gone. And I mean, the guy uptown that owned the uh, hardware store, they're out of business now. Jack Potts was his name. And I come up and say, Mr. Potts, can I buy a box of bullets? Uh, but I only got like 50 cents. Just make, make installments to me. I had a single barrel 410. I'd go through a box of shells every day. He goes, whoa, whoa, you got to slow down a little bit. You got to pay me for the last ones. So I kind of got into hunting that way. And then I got into rabbit dogs and coon dogs and then deer hunting because it was so fascinating to chase them. I remember the excitement of seeing horns. And now this is back. I had a bow and arrow and I shot wooden arrows. You know, I mean, I couldn't, they could be 10 feet from me and I still miss, you know, but it was just, it was something that I could do by myself and that I thought like, man, I'm, I'm out in the woods. Well, this is really cool. So then I started, I got a little better bow and arrow. And I shot my first buck when I was, I think I was 13 or 12. It was like a little spike horn. But I remember, I thought it was like, it looked like a giant, you know, to me. But I put all that time and effort into it. In I thought, this is a lot of fun. You know, this is what it's all about. It's not about pulling the trigger or releasing the bow and arrow. To me, it, it, it's what it takes to get to that step. I just started traveling all over. My dad um, retired from truck driving, was a builder, which allowed us to take me to Colorado. We went out to Eagle, Colorado and hunted out there for elk. I think we went four trips out there and um, had great success. And then I started traveling like in Northeast Missouri, all over hunting whitetails. And then when I started selling minerals, that allowed me to travel even farther because somebody would call me in Georgia and I'd be like, hey, I'll just come down and is there any place to hunt? They go, well, I got 500 acres. I go, I'll see you in a few days. So the hunting came, it lured me in there. I never, I didn't really care to go out and do the normal things like a lot of my buddies did, you know, I mean, sure, we all went to high school parties and stuff like that. Don't get me wrong, but I never really got into stuff that they did. I enjoyed it where I'd start a bonfire at nighttime and let my coon dogs run. That to me was peaceful. And it was just, it's something that I could just give back. And I always thought, man, what can I do to like give back or make something that I could leave a mark for, a mark on? And then once this deer mineral, it's been the greatest thing that happened to me because I met so many great people, but I see their families get more involved. You know, I mean, they're taking their kids out in the woods and, and throwing a football around and making them carry a bag of deer mineral and dumping it down. It's like Christmas time when you go check a trail camera. It just started to me like last year, I think I hunted like three days, but I was hunting with those people in their stands. They call me, hey, you ain't going to believe what just happened. I'm like, no, but please share. <laughs> so it just, for the love of the outdoors, it just, I never really fished that much. I'm really not patient enough to sit in a boat for that long. So that's to where, like, I like Western hunting, like out west of Montana where you spot and stalk. And I mean, I've been fortunate to go all over out west and hunt and harvest some amazing animals, but it's the journey that is most important to me to get there. The second on the list is harvesting the animal. And 
how much importance that animal is and how to respect that animal. I think that's where a lot of people lose track. And every year, November 14th, you can check my Facebook page. It'll say, people, please hunt safe tomorrow, opening day, November 15th, gun season, you know, firearm season. But don't worry about so much about the size of the rack. I mean, I get so tired of going to these hunting shows and people are like, well, I don't shoot anything unless it's 150. Well, you must have a good farm in Michigan because anything over 130 usually gets shot. Forget about all the hype about 180 class or whatever. It's the memory. It's what takes you to that step. Step back. How do you tell a kid 12 years old sitting there for his first deer, sorry, son, you can't shoot that six point. He's only a hundred inch buck. To him, that's a 300 inch buck. I mean, some people might disagree with me, but hey, I'm a, everybody shot small deer. I mean, I have, I choose not to anymore. That's just my practice, but I haven't shot a nice buck in the last couple of years. It's just my, I mean, I've seen plenty of eights and 10 pointers, but I want to see where they can go. They're not pressured where I'm at. So I tell everybody, just relax. It's not all about having so much pressure on these kids to harvest big animals. It's you got to show these kids we're their mentors. You know, we got to show them how to hunt safe, how to have a good time, and let the family fam all. And I saw in massive mineral mix, man, I met some great people all over the state. It's nice to see them come back to the every year, you know, the same people. And they're like, hey, you remember me? I'm like, yes, I do. You live in Perry, Michigan. <laughs> so, so it's really cool. And, and we know them. It's not like we're hiring somebody to represent us. If we do a hunting show, it's been a couple of years. Joseph, you know, would always help me. They'd see the same people. My wife, who knew nothing about hunting, outsold me in this hunting show. She was selling food plot seats. And I'm like, you don't even know what they are. And she's like, I read the back of the package. So (laughs) she didn't even know that it was like a passion. And the more people I meet, it just brings people together, I think. It gets you out of the couch and out of the house and gets you doing something right. That's where we wanted to end up with us. So, wow. You said a lot over the last five minutes. And, Folks, I haven't killed a buck in a number of years. Have I seen a lot of bucks? Yeah, last year I saw in one sitting, I had four bucks around me. The biggest was a 10 point and the other three were eight points and they weren't 20 yards from me. On the farm last year, I dedicated myself just to shoot does because we got way too many does. I mean, way too many. We counted 500 acres over 200 does one night we went out on different fields. Wow. But there's way too many deer, and there's a lot of reason for that because we have a big sanctuary near us, but we have the food, so they're going to come on to our farm to eat, and then they go back to the sanctuary. They don't get hunted, I mean, unless they come on our farm. But the biggest mistake I think people are making is, one, the pressure. Now, if you feel you want to shoot mature bucks and they're four and a half years or older, then it's a mature buck and the size of the rack really doesn't matter. It's a mature buck. So and that might be different things as you said. In Ohio, it was a monster deer. In Michigan, the same deer, same age class was a heck of a lot smaller. There's a lot of reasons for that. But I would hope folks, as you go into 2019 season, will start thinking about, okay, what are my goals? What are my plans? And what am I really going to try to do this hunting season? Am I going to try to enjoy it? Or I'm going to have the pressure of, oh, I got to beat Joe because he always gets a 150 buck. Well, maybe this is your say, Joe, God bless you. You're a better hunter than I am. But I'm going to go out and have fun anyway because Joe and I have a lot of fun and we're just going to enjoy the hunt. It seems to me within the industry, there's so much competition that it spills over because feel pressure, especially people that are sponsored. I've got to get game on the ground. I've got to have pictures showing that XYZ gear or whatever works. And that's what their sponsors expect. So we're kind of shooting ourselves in the foot a little bit for that rather than saying, okay, I'm going to sponsor you because you're a good hunter and you represent the qualities of hunting that we want. It's a slippery slope. And I understand manufacturers, why they have certain expectations. I get that. And if you're listening to this and you're a manufacturer, I get that because you want to sell your product. And the hunters are the marketing arm of your company. You can advertise all you want, but if you get hunters with bucks down, with does down, with successful hunt stories, then that proof that your product works. Sure. It's like you say, the pressure. I mean, I remember going to these hunting shows 
And I'd have pro staff team members walk up to me that I didn't even know who they were. And they're like, hey, we've used your mineral, you know, and for $5,000, we can put you on the side of our trailer. And I was like, where'd you buy my mineral at? Because I knew every store. They're like, oh, over the internet? And I got, I don't think so. And it was just like, they're out there trying to get people to just sponsor for sponsors. And I thought, why don't you like buy a couple of my bags and try it? Uh, maybe I do like a pro staff price. So that's where I, I do now because I don't sponsor any team anymore unless it's pro staff pricing because I want to make them work a little bit for it. You know, I'm just not going to hand them a bunch of mineral and let them dump down because you don't hear much from them. And it's frustrating. You go to these hunting shows and how fast do you need a bow and arrow? Or, and people are losing, in my opinion, and it holds true. I mean, people are losing the reason it's called woodsmanship and they're losing the reason to hunt learning the reason how to hunt. I mean, I can buy the best bow and arrow, the best scent camo gear, but you can't teach me how to shoot that bow. You can't teach me to shoot ethics. You can't teach me woodsmanship. And I think people need need to step back and just because they see it on TV doesn't mean it's the best product out there. If you have a budget of $300, there's nothing wrong with a $300 bow and arrow. Um, If you can only afford one bag of deer mineral, there's nothing wrong with that. Don't put so much pressure on these young hunters to think they need to be all just the top of the line to enjoy something. I mean, my first camel was a black pair of Levi's and a red plaid shirt that I used to put pine needles over. And I thought that was awesome. (laughs) (laughs) And I wore a black baseball hat. If it works for you, it works for you. You go to a garage sale and you find a bow and arrow and it works for you. Enjoy it. Hunt with it. Have fun with it. The main thing is have fun. You don't need to see a deer every time you go out. Think of all the times that you see like different wildlife. I was on an elk hunt in Colorado and I never saw elk for three days, but man, I saw some mule deers. I saw some black bears. Amazing. I saw a mountain lion. That I remember. And I harvested elk out there that year, but I remember everything else, like the camp stories the fishing and stuff like that. That's what people need to realize. It's just lay off the pressure and just have fun. The the best, my hunts in Michigan, my wife bought me an octagon deer blind. It has a deer heater in it. And I go out there in my dress shoes. And I honestly, I I hunt my sweatshirt and I just sit there. And most of the time I fall asleep. They probably walk right by me. I don't even know, but I have fun. I'm out there enjoying it. And I look out and I'm like, oh, there's a turkey. That's cool. You don't have to squeeze the trigger every time. You don't have to harvest something every time. What I think is cool is I encourage people to take a log, like a daily log and write stuff down. Write your thoughts down about hunting. Look back in 20 years. You know, if you're 18 years old now, look back and see how much you've learned. That's huge. And I think Joseph, you know, really takes the cake on documenting stuff and writing stuff down for the brow tine buck and how many years it took to get there. I mean, he could have given up a long time ago and said, you know, I'm done with hunting. You know, I mean, after that near fatal accident out of a tree and his climber, most guys would have given up. Pretty scary stuff. The book talks about, bam, hits here. His excitement for that buck at a six and a half year old buck was probably like hitting a lotto for some people. That's cool. I mean, that's his passion. You'll never meet another more passionate person than him. And his book says it right there. Who and we're it? talking about zombie deer and the brow time buck by Joseph Dealer. Yes, sir. Yes, and you sir. can get yeah. that on Amazon. And uh, Joseph is a friend, and I'm trying to help him, motivate him to write about him almost dying. It's a, it's a heck of a story. And if you listen to his episode on Whitetail Rendezvous, you can hear part of that story. But anyway, so here we are. Did he actually tell you what promoted him to write this book? Did he tell you the facts behind it? My wife. Well, for two years, said, we just want you to write a very, very short story yeah. on, on Massive Mineral Mix Facebook page, like a little four-liner that talks yeah. about your success. And two years later, he's like, hey, I'm finished. And I said, wow, that was awesome. It took you that long to write four lines. He's like, wrote a book. <laughs> and I'm like, well, you kind of really outdone yourself on that one there, buddy. But he writes his book. I know his family his are good authors and everything. And And everybody I've talked to about that book that he wrote said it's very easy to understand and read. Yeah, it's a one-set read. Here's an idea that we'll have to get talked to Joseph, but if somebody orders X number of bags of 
massive mineral mix, they can get one of Joseph's books. Sure. Even Joseph should talk about that, whatever yeah. that number is. So one, sure. he gets paid for the book and you get paid every, it works for everybody. But I think everybody should read that because it's a story that needs to be told about dedication, persistence, just the things you're talking about and how he found a small sanctuary basically be finding its house, five acres or so, coming out of a swamp. And that's where the massive mineral mix was. And he patterned them and he got them. And that's the good thing about this mineral. It's in Michigan, land's expensive anywhere you go, I believe, you know. In Michigan, a lot of people, we don't have the ability to buy 80 or 100 acre parcel. My biggest bucks have been killed or harvested off five or 10 acres. It's something that you can pattern these deer. You don't need a 500-acre piece of property to make mineral or hunt. Hunt with what you have. A lot of my guys, when it was legal, was using it on state land in Michigan. And they said they liked it because once it disappeared, it looked like a squirrel dug a hole. And most hunters would walk right by it. And then they would hang their stands, but they knew where their mineral station was. So, I mean, it's helped a lot of people in the Waterloo area in Michigan harvest deer. That's been a cool thing. Do with what you have. If you only have a small spot of land, that 10 acres, make it shine like 100 acres. You know, that's all you can do. Just have a good time. Well, I've really enjoyed this time, Jack, and we'll be talking more because I got a bunch of people that need to get some of those samples. But saying that, we're going to end the segment of Gear Wednesday with Jack Hadley of Massive Mineral Mix. Thanks so much, Jack. Hey, thank you very much. Take care. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to tune in tomorrow for another episode of Whitetail Rendezvous, where you can listen and learn from the experts so you can be more successful on your next hunt. Until next time, listen, learn, and succeed.